Good morning. It's about 5.20 in the morning and we're going to go on a long drive today. This is going to be the longest drive I've done in my Tesla so far. It's uh, nearly 600 miles. Uh, we're going to be going to the south of England to uh, visit some family. And uh, we've got the car fully charged. Uh, so all I need to do now is have my breakfast and uh, get the car warmed up. Well, that's uh, me loaded up, so it's now time to uh, unplug the car and uh, we'll be on our way. So, time to start my drive. I'll uh, uh, set in the navigation and we'll see uh, what happens. Okay, so uh, I've put the navigation in. Uh, we have got 588 miles of driving to do, so not quite 600. Um, the first stop will be Abington Services and we are predicting an 18% uh, state of charge when we get there. So we'll see how that gets on. Uh, we should be getting there just before nine o'clock if the traffic's okay. The general principle with uh, long distance driving is that you start up, you start your journey with a full charge and you want to finish your journey with as little charge as possible and that minimizes your journey time. But the trick in between is to understand that the time it takes to charge a battery up to 80% is the same length of time it takes to charge up your battery from uh, 80 to 100 percent so you don't want to be fully recharging um, along uh, all of your uh, recharging stops you want to charge up to maybe 60 to 80 percent and what you find is that your your rate of recharge is uh, much faster at uh, lower states of charge so it's advantageous to have more stops and uh, with with smaller recharges so one of the features of this, which I'm testing at the moment, is the, uh, the Matrix headlights. I quite like them. Uh, they're, they're very bright. Um, they do have automatic uh, dimming included. Um, my experience of them is that uh, the reliability of the automatic dimming is maybe about 90%. So there's one car out of every 10 which uh, it doesn't dim for, which is... Uh, something I hope will be improved in the future. My old car had uh, Bizonon headlights and uh, they were much better than the uh, halogen bulbs that uh, I had on my uh, even older car and uh, the, um, uh, these, these, these headlights are a lot better certainly in full beam in, uh, in, in, in dipped beam uh, they're, they're still pretty good as well so now we're going to be heading on to the Aberdeen Bypass. So this is uh, where the uh, longer stretches of uh, dual carriageway start and uh, we will uh, be um, pretty much in cruise control most of the way down to uh, the south of England. And of course with dual carriageways we have the ability to uh, test out the autopilot as well. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm on autopilot and we'll see how well this goes. So this journey is uh, predicted to uh, take about uh, uh, just under uh, 10 hours, 45 minutes in total. Um, now I started out, I think it was about uh, 5.45 in the morning. Um, and uh, the thing to note about this journey is that the, uh, the efficiency of the drive is um, not as good as uh, what it has been during the daytime. So uh, from my house to Inverurie, uh, I was doing about uh, 300 uh, watt hours per mile. Um, I know during, the, uh, uh, during a, a warmer day, um, it would have been about uh, 220, 230 watt hours per mile. So the um, efficiency, because it's colder, um, is definitely uh, not as good. Well, I'm about uh, 20 miles away from Dundee and for most of the journey uh, from the Aberdeen Bypass, I've been on autopilot and I have to say, um, it does a very good job of, of keeping within the lane. Um, it was something initially I was quite disconcerted with. Um, it, I, I tend to have a bit of a, a right-hand bias towards uh, driving on the lanes. Um, this drives very centre in the lane. I, I'm guessing the bias that I've had is simply because I, I find a bit more security being closer to the, uh, uh, the centre line than I am to the edge of the dual carriageway. And I think a lot of that is uh, instinctive. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot more road defects which you're likely to have on the on the edge of the road, for example. Um, but overall, um, a very uh, a very pleasant experience so far. So we are now coming up to Dundee, and. Um, my journey to Abington uh, is a continuous journey, uh, fully charged at my house, 100%. Um, but if I wasn't fully charged, the question is, what options do I have? Um, if I stick with the supercharger network, um, there is a supercharger in Aberdeen, there's a supercharger in Dundee, and there is a supercharger in Perth. And that gives me uh, enough options uh, to uh, get to my final destination. It will take a bit longer, of course, um, but uh, I won't be left stranded. And if I couldn't even get to my supercharger in Aberdeen, um, I would have enough options uh, in terms of uh, local chargers, rapid chargers, um, in uh, in Verurie. And there's a 50 kilowatt charger there. Um, but uh, as it is, um, the advice is always uh, leave your house fully charged if you're going on a long trip. And uh, this is exactly what we're doing. Right, so we're in Dundee. Um, this is the only bit of uh, traffic light um, between here and, um, and, the, uh, and the south of England. Um, we've got a roundabout in Perth, one in Dunblane, once we get to Dunblane, there are no more roundabouts on the motorway network until um, until Guildford, basically. So we're now uh, at just under 50% charge on the, the journey. We're halfway between uh, Perth and uh, Dunblane. Uh, we've travelled uh, about 123 miles. So that essentially means that at motorway speeds, we've got uh, 246 miles of uh, effective range and uh, I think it uh, shows some um, I think it shows how uh, how much more inefficient oh, what was that all about <laughs> nothing to crash into um, so uh, I think what it shows is some um, how much more inefficient the uh, effective range is at uh, motorway speeds and cold temperatures. Um, so uh, worth bearing in mind, but that is factored into the uh, predicted range estimation uh, wh when I started my journey.
So we're on the Dumblane roundabout, last roundabout before uh, the motorway network and then it's uh, pretty much uh, continuous driving all the way south with the exception of course of going to uh, rest stops. So we are now approaching the M74 and we're about 30 miles away from uh, charging up the car at Abington Services. And one of the things uh, to note is uh, as you approach a supercharger, you, um, you have uh, a preconditioning of the battery happening. And what that means is that it, the, uh, the, the car will bring the battery up to a, a warmer temperature. And warmer batteries uh, can uh, receive a, a faster charging rate uh, than cold ones. Um, so uh, it's uh, interesting that all of this is uh, planned in. Uh, so we're now approaching the M74 and uh, this is essentially one continuous motorway all the way from uh, Glasgow down to um, Birmingham. So now we are coming up to Abington Services. So uh, this is where the uh, supercharger is that we're uh, supposed to use. Um, we've got 21% charge. So I think that's uh, a bit better than the uh, predicted uh, charge um, at my house. Uh, I think it predicted 19% if I recall correctly. So all I have to do is find the supercharger stalls. So we have got Tesla vehicle charging this way, okay. So, I'll use this one here. Right, there we go. So, let's uh, go and uh, have a look at uh, my, um, let's look at charging this thing up. So, in theory, all I have to do is plug this in uh, let's see. So I should be able to just use the CCS charger, plug it in. And let's see, what's it doing? Once that starts flashing green, that should be good. Come on. Right, flashing green. That's good. Let's have a look inside. So as we can see, the charging rate is about 95 kilowatt hour, uh, kilowatts. So uh, we're going to uh, go and um, use the uh, services here and I'll come back. I've just uh, been into the services um, about uh, 10 minutes ago and we are charging up. It's about 40% full the battery um, and the charge rate is about 100 kilowatts uh, maybe just a little bit over um, it's reckoning we've got about 20 minutes left uh, of uh, charging to go okay so we are now sufficiently charged to get us to Penrith All right, so back on the motorway. And um, I arrived there and there was one Tesla on the stand and I was the second one. By the time I uh, finished charging, um, there was only one stand left. So there are a whole bunch of other chargers which uh, became occupied. And according to the planner, uh, all chargers at T-Bay services, my next stop, are currently available, uh, but that can easily change. And it wouldn't surprise me if some of the people I saw at those uh, Tesla chargers I see again at uh, T-Bay services. 
Now, one of the things which you find really easy about the supercharging network is all you have to do is plug in the charger. You don't have to faff about with any apps. When you order a Tesla, your credit card details are stored and those details are used uh, by the supercharger network every time you plug your, te your Tesla in. So uh, the money is uh, automatically uh, uh, debited from your, uh, from your card. Um, you don't have that option with uh, other uh, charging uh, facilities. Um, so if you go to, say for example, uh, Charge Place Scotland, um, you have to get the app out, you have to initiate the charge, and th your credit card is linked to the app on your phone rather than your car. And that's a, a major difference. Um, the other thing to note is that the price per kilowatt hour uh, at these chargers is uh, 35 pence at the moment. So it's a lot more expensive than charging up at home. So last night um, I charged up at 5 pence per kilowatt hour on the Octopus Go tariff and uh, uh, the rest of the week I was charging up with uh, spare sunshine on my rooftop. Um, so it's a bit ch roadside uh, charging is very expensive and I think that trend is going to continue. So one of the uh, things about the superchargers worth uh, noting is that um, each pair of superchargers has uh, got a common power supply. Um, so when you arrive at a supercharger, uh, the general advice is don't park next to another Tesla vehicle unless there are no other spaces um, available. And if you do that, uh, then you get the full power. But if somebody else is parked right next to you and it's on a, a shared um, power supply, uh, then the power supply to your car will uh, drop in half. And uh, that's what happened uh, in Abington. Um, I was uh, charging up at uh, 67 kilowatts someone parked next to me and the uh, the charge dropped down to uh, 50 kilowatts. So we are now coming up to T-Bay services and uh, I'll be interesting to see uh, how many spare charges there are left here. Uh, we've got 33% charge so uh, let's go and take a look. Alright, so we turn left, it's not, no we don't, we go straight on, so we follow the signs for Tesla. Okay, let's get this thing charged up. And it's charging, excellent. So it's rapidly charging up. It's, uh, ooh, we have got 120, 130, oh, we have got 135 kilowatts. This is much better than Abington. Now, one of the things to note is that by next year, I reckon there's probably gonna be double the number of Teslas on UK streets and I've got a feeling that uh, I've got a feeling that uh, the superchargers will be a bit oversubscribed at that point. Um, now if you imagine 2030 half of all these cars are going to be electric. Um, we're going to need a lot more chargers in a place like this so uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see um, how the charging network develops in motorway services like this place. So I've uh, been to the services and I've also come back and had my lunch and um, we are now back up to 80%. Um, we're still charging, uh, we reckon to have about 15 minutes. Now when I arrived here there were two other, I think maybe two, maybe three other cars and now all of the uh, parking stands are completely full. However, nobody's waiting, so that's a good thing. Um, let's go and have a look at the 
charger uh, the the uh, the screen here so what it's telling me is that um to get to warwick we need to be charging up for 15 more minutes um, at the moment there isn't sufficient charge to get to warwick now on here we've got something called this button here this will tell you um uh how many uh spare charges there are at each stand so that so the next uh, charger southbound on the m6 is keel services and you can see there's only one charger left available but in stoke-on-trent which are 250 kilowatt chargers we've got six chargers left so we start to get more options available the further south we drive beyond keel services um, if we go to hilton park 11 chargers uh, available um, now we've got hilton park north and south i'm not too sure whether it's uh, uh, distributed between the two um, going on to warwick at the moment two chargers so the plan for recharging is to get to warwick services but using this facility i can make a determination whether it's worthwhile stopping at keel or hilton park or stoke-on-trent on the way south and that gives me uh, some flexible options i can get home i can get to my final destination from keel services that's no problem uh, so uh, we will continue uh, waiting in the meantime uh, we can go on to youtube so we can just go to entertainment type on youtube um, i find this browser and this youtube app to be quite slow and laggy um, my ipad never goes this slow this is a bit disappointing um, and uh, what have we got hey everybody i'm zach and i'm jesse and you're watching tesla time news episode 266 on now you know so yeah whilst you're waiting um there's plenty of entertainment options um the uh this is a fantastic screen for actually for watching uh youtube videos um i've been watching uh some of my favorite uh channels uh, whilst i've been waiting um and it doesn't feel like i'm spending all uh, um it doesn't feel like i'm wasting time here um you know um these seats are very comfortable and um it's uh, it's a good entertainment uh, channel you can watch uh, whole vid uh, whole movies here if you want to so uh we have got free queuing teslas so we are going to get out of here and uh let's uh, see what we can do so um i got in there maybe uh 15 minutes before a large pulse of uh, tesla vehicles came in and uh, i have seen one other person at the supercharger who i saw at abington services and i think it kind of shows that in, <laughs> you, 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 it is often the case that you see the same people again and again so one of the things you can do uh when you're navigating is that um as you can see um the visibility is only about uh, three or four miles ahead the uh, uh, moving map if you want to have an overview of uh, uh, where you're going to just uh, go here and you just scroll down and uh, you can see uh, where you're supposed to go um, in the big picture and uh, you can see that uh, the prediction is 14% uh, battery at uh, Warwick southbound services um, and again, if you want to see the, uh, the closer view, you just uh, sc scroll back up and uh, that is uh, how you can uh, navigate, how you can adjust the map between uh, the near scale and the, the big scale. So now I'm in on the M6 and uh, we are traveling uh, between uh, uh, the junction turn off for Manchester and uh, Stoke-on-Trent and uh, the uh, f the efficiency is about 232 watt hours per mile now we have gone downhill since uh, t-bay services but uh, not that much um, what 
the main difference is the fact that the uh, the temperature is uh, a lot warmer. It's about uh, 15 degrees outside. That's a uh, it's uh, much better for uh, the battery and the motor efficiency uh, when you're at that uh, uh, kind of uh, temperature. Um, and the result is, is that uh, getting to Warwick services is going to be an absolute piece of cake. It's uh, predicting 30% battery remaining now. Um, and it just goes to show uh, how temperature, air temperature, makes a massive difference to the uh, uh, efficiency of uh, this vehicle. So here's uh, an interesting graph. Um, this is a uh, trip consumption and uh, what you can see is a state of charge on the left hand uh, on the y-axis um, and uh, the distance from my origin to my destination on the on, on the x-axis. So the grey line represents the predicted uh, uh, electricity consumption and the green line represents the actual state of charge and the predicted remaining state of charge. So uh, as you can see we're doing a lot better here. So we're coming up to Hilton Park services now. Um, we're not going to stop here, we've still got lots of charge, 45% um, charge. Um, and uh, there's 10 spare superchargers at uh, Hilton Park South. So um, yes, I could, I could go in here, um, but I will continue on to Warwick. To be honest, I've probably got enough charge at this rate to get to uh, Oxford services. Well, here I am on the M6 in Birmingham and um, the Navigation was suggesting I should have taken the M5 and the M42 round Birmingham and silly me, I was just a creature of habit and I decided to carry on thinking this route is shorter and therefore quicker and oh dear how wrong I was. However, um, the thing to note here is that I'm not touching the brake or the accelerator at all and the Traffic Aware Cruise Control is doing an excellent job um, and so is the Autopilot. Even here I'm stood still and um, it's, uh, it's on Autopilot. Um, all I have to do is just simply keep a look out, uh, keep my hand on the steering wheel and hover my foot over the brake. So it just uh, takes care of everything. I think that's just absolutely fantastic in that regard. So I'm now coming off the M42 onto the M40. Um, I've had a notification uh, to say that the Warwick supercharger is closed. So I am now automatically rerouted to the Oxford supercharger and uh, it's predicting that I will have 14% charge uh, in Oxford. So um, we shall continue and uh, hopefully uh, this works out no problem at all. So we are now coming up to Oxford services. Um, we've got a 17% charge now um, and the efficiency that we've had from our battery and our motors has been 225 watt hours per mile which I think at motorway speeds is uh, really very very good. Um, the winds uh, according to the forecast I read last night, were um, not uh, particularly uh, uh, strong in any direction. Um, so uh, for all I can say, these are reference light winds. Um, I am very, uh, I am quite tired. Um, you know, nearly fr just over three hours, 45 minutes of driving. Um, that's, that's a fair bit. Um, you know, I might need, my, my, my car might not need a rest but uh, my, my, but uh, I, I certainly could do with uh, a stop every now and again. Um, so what I'll do is I will charge up here. We don't have so many miles to go, um, maybe uh, what 60 miles, something like that. Um, so I reckon I can get all of my charging done in the time it takes to do a quick visit to the uh, services. Okay, it looks like a bit of a queue going in. And 
There we go. Right. Let's see if we can loosen this up a bit. All right, that, that works better. And it's charging, excellent. Well, just been in and out of the services and now I've only got five minutes of supercharging left to do, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's warm down here. It's uh, 17, 18 degrees and um, I've been wearing that jumper all the way from uh, Aberdeenshire because I thought it was gonna be cold down here, but yeah, they've got a different idea of what cold is down here uh, to what we have. Um, no, this is like summertime, it's lovely. It's, and it's the middle of all October as well, it's brilliant. Okay, we're fully charged up, so we are on our way. When I say fully charged up, I mean sufficiently charged up. We're only 50% charged, but that is more than adequate. So I'm on the M25 now, and uh, we will be heading to Guildford, and we're gonna be stopping at Tesco's. And one of the things about Tesco's is that they have been rolling out uh, uh, electric car chargers. And uh, the um, electric car chargers uh, come in different flavors. Um, there is uh, seven kilowatts, which is free. Um, there is also uh, 22 kilowatts in some instances. Um, that apparently is also free. Um, and then you've got rapid chargers, which are charging 26 uh, pence per kilowatt hour. Um, so what I want to do is uh, try out the free chargers. And the reason for doing so is um, that I'm in Tesco's anyway, um, and it's incidental uh, to my journey. And uh, I like free stuff. Um, and if you can uh, if you can get a charge for free uh, take every advantage of it so we're going to do that demonstration um, we are coming up to the m3 junction with the m25 and we'll be turning off at the a3 junction very soon okay so we are now on the a3 and we are coming uh, up to our Guildford turnoff um, the is a Tesco's uh, very close to the hospital um, that uh, I'll be uh, using and uh, we'll uh, try that out. So Guildford is uh, one of the uh, cities uh, which was uh, closest uh, to where I uh, used to live uh, as a child so um, uh, I know this I knew this place fairly well uh, but not this corner. Right, so here we are at uh, Tesco's and I think I've seen the pot point here uh, before, so we will have a look. Here we are. Right. Let's, uh, let's go. So I have um, plugged in my uh, car into uh, this pod point. Um, however, it doesn't want to charge. And what is going on is, um, let me just show you. I go to the pod point app and uh, it tells me uh, that my car, my charge has been claimed successfully I've plugged it in, um, I, I type in uh, confirm charge, like so, it says the charge has been claimed successfully, uh, but it's not charging up. I have no idea what's going on. Um, this is just a, a bit um, very, very strange. Okay, so we have got 14 miles left to go. We've done our, we've done our shop and off we go. Um, we, I have to say that Tesco pod point experience was the most disappointing experience of the whole, uh, of the whole day. Um, supercharging experience, brilliant. Um, but, uh, the, uh, Tesco pod point, they, they need to figure out how to make their, their chargers just work. 
Um, the experience I had with one charger seemingly occupied but not but with nothing plugged into it and the other one available but not responding uh, when I tell it to uh, do something um, that was really quite a disappointment so we are now approaching Bucks Green this is uh, a village just outside my village so this um, journey the last leg of the journey from uh, uh, Guildford to here um, that was about uh, just under 15 miles and we did 183 watt hours per mile so that's over five miles per kilowatt hour that's um, reflective of the fact that um, car electric cars are much more efficient at lower speeds, um, whereas uh, petrol and diesel cars um, have their worst efficiency at low speeds. Um, here we are, here's uh, Rudgwick. And just a short drive up here. Um, now five miles per kilowatt hour, I think that's fantastic. Um, for, and the overall journey uh, from uh, Aberdeenshire that was about four miles per kilowatt hour on average okay here we are one little reverse and then we're in right 588 miles let's get this thing charged up. So this car is now on a slow charge. You can get that from any address in the United Kingdom that has electrical supply. Does that matter? Well, I'm not gonna be taking this car out uh, for another 300 mile drive the next day. So no, it doesn't really matter. So the key takeaway from this, uh, from this journey was I've got no range anxiety at all. 600 miles with only a 45 minute penalty on my journey time. Of that 45 minutes, 20 minutes was due to uh, traffic in Birmingham and five minutes was due to uh, staying at a supercharger for five minutes too long. So the journey time isn't significantly longer than it would be with a diesel car. The one big uncertainty in all of this long distance driving with electric cars is not range anxiety, it's, it's queuing anxiety. As we saw at T-Bay services, there were three Teslas waiting to charge up. And that waiting time is not something you have to suffer uh, when you are driving a petrol or diesel car in ordinary circumstances. Don't be afraid to buy an electric car if uh, range anxiety is your issue. This car will do the distance just fine. And with that, I'd just like to thank you for watching this video and uh, I will talk to you again very soon.